As Palestinian children in Gaza literally starve to death and the spectre of a man-made famine looms, Israel continues its war against the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, or UNRWA, which crucially provides direct services, food, education, healthcare to millions of Palestinians, especially in Gaza. So, time for another debunked seven Israeli myths about UNRWA. Myth number one, UNRWA is only for Palestinians. What about Jewish refugees? Well, actually, UNRWA was established in 1949 by the UN General Assembly, and Israel was one of the countries that voted in favor of it. In fact, in the wake of what Israel calls its War of Independence and what Palestinians call the Nakba, and for the first two full years of its existence, UNRWA also provided relief to Jewish refugees from that conflict up until 1952 when the Israelis decided they would take over that mission. And in 1967, it was the Israelis who occupied the West Bank and Gaza, and then insisted UNRWA stick around to look after the local Palestinian population. Myth number two, you don't need UNRWA, you could just have the UNHCR, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, which takes care of all the other refugees in the world. It could take care of Palestinian refugees too. Nope, not true. UNRWA was set up in 1949, and its mandate to deal specifically with 1948 refugees from Palestine comes from the UN General Assembly. The UNHCR was set up a year later in 1950, and its mandate comes from the Refugee Convention, which explicitly said it didn't apply to refugees already receiving assistance from other UN agencies. Also, the UNHCR doesn't do direct services the way UNRWA does. Myth number three, UNRWA, unlike other refugee agencies, allows the descendants of Palestinian refugees to claim refugee status too, and thereby inflates and perpetuates the refugee problem. Sorry, what? Under international law, the children of refugees are also refugees. That's not a Palestinian thing, that's an Afghan thing, that's a Somali thing, that's a Tibetan thing. In fact, UNRWA, unlike the UNHCR, says that only fathers, not mothers, can transfer refugee status to their descendants, thereby excluding a significant amount of Palestinians across the world who would otherwise be able to claim refugee status. Myth number four, UNRWA textbooks teach anti-Semitic hate to Palestinian kids. Not true. In fact, a Trump State Department report found that 97% of those textbooks contain no anti-Semitic or even anti-Israel bias. 3% is still bad, I know, but it's a tiny minority. Myth number five, UNRWA is in cahoots with Hamas in Gaza. Actually, Hamas doesn't really like UNRWA, never has. Here's a story from 10 years ago about Hamas being peeved at UNRWA because it was too Western, not in line with conservative Islamic values, and a bit of a competitor with Hamas in terms of providing social services to Gaza's population. In fact, Hamas has been accused of threatening and even trying to assassinate UNRWA staff. Myth number six, 12 UNRWA employees were involved in the October 7th Hamas attacks on Israel. First off, even if there were 12 UNRWA employees who participated in that barbarism, that's 12 out of 13,000 UNRWA employees in Gaza, less than 0.01% of the total. And yet the US agreed to halt vital humanitarian aid for millions of Palestinians via UNRWA because of that alleged 0.01%. Second, we don't even know if 12 employees were involved. Israel has offered no hard evidence. Despite Secretary Blinken claiming Israel's claims on this were highly credible, an internal US intelligence report says it has low confidence that UNRWA staffers were part of the attack and says Israel has not shared the raw intelligence behind its assessments. And last week, UNRWA said in an internal report that some of their employees were tortured by the Israelis into making false claims about UNRWA staffers taking part on October the 7th. But that report from UNRWA hasn't had as much coverage as the initial Israeli claims about UNRWA. You'll be shocked to hear. And finally, myth number seven. There is no Israeli plan to deliberately destroy UNRWA. That's just a Palestinian conspiracy theory. Oh really, a Palestinian conspiracy theory, you say? Meet Noga Arbel, a former Israeli foreign ministry official. Here she is testifying in front of the Israeli parliament in January. האתגר שלנו במלחמה הוא לחסל את האיום ולא להרתיע אותו ואנחנו יודעים איך לחסל פעילי טרור קשה לנו יותר עם רעיון. אונר"א זה המקור של רעיון שאמרה עינת היא יולדת עוד ועוד טרוריסטים בכל מיני שיטות ואי אפשר יהיה לנצח את המלחמה אם אנחנו לא נשמיד את אונר"א וההשמדה הזו חייבת להתחיל מיד In fact, this week we learned that the Israeli military is bent on dismantling, on eliminating UNRWA So forget the lies, the myths, the propaganda this is an Israeli war on UNRWA and by extension on the starving people of Gaza. Why on earth is the United States joining in?